Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Tilly and today I'm going to be filming a quarterly wrap up. So I thought as I'd taken quite the extended break from booktube, I thought it might be quite a nice idea to catch you up on the books that I've read so far this year. And I also thought it might be quite a fun idea to do it within a tier ranking system. Okay, so first of all, I thought I'd talk you through my tiers. So me being me, they are all tiers based on Taylor Swift lyrics. So you might be able to recognize some of them. The first one is, best believe I'm still bejeweled when I walk in the room, I made the whole place shimmer. So that's, you know, 10 out of 10, no notes. Absolutely love that book. And then we've got, and all I feel in my stomach are butterflies, the beautiful kind, making up for lost times. Yeah, that's a book that's good, not perfect, but still absolutely loved it. Then we've got, I'm a mess, but I'm the mess you wanted, which is, you know, it was okay, nothing groundbreaking, kind of middle of the road. Then we've got, darling, I'm a nightmare dressed as a daydream, which is, I was okay, but maybe not particularly great. And then we've got, I really, really hate that stupid old pickup truck, you never let me drive, which is absolutely did not like this book whatsoever and then as you can see i've got all of the books that i've read so far in this quarter down here so first of all let's start with the inheritance gains by jennifer lynn barnes which is the first book i read this year i absolutely loved this book it was really fast paced really interesting loved all of the characters, loved all of the sort of twists and turns. By the way, I'm not necessarily going to give synopsis for all these books because I feel like we'd be here forever, but this is a book I would absolutely recommend you read. And it was actually also my first five star of the year. So I feel like it has to go up on 10 out of 10, no notes, because it was absolutely fantastic. Like I said, would highly, highly recommend. I then went straight into the Hawthorne Legacy, which is the next book in that series which I did enjoy but potentially not as much. I think as you go through a, a, a series especially a mystery thriller type series it does start to lose its magic however I would say the second book I did really really enjoy. I'm going to put it in the second category. Then we have Pages and Co Tilly and the Book Wanderers. Not going to lie the main reason I wanted to read the series is because the main protagonist was called Tilly. Being someone who never ever saw their name on anything growing up uh, there were plenty of named Tilly but uh, yeah I was quite excited that there was a main character called Tilly so I really wanted to give it a read. I would say it was enjoyable, I did quite enjoy it but I do think it was nothing particularly special, please don't hate me. I do think I would like to read the rest of the series because I'm still quite intrigued to carry on but the first book was a little bit disappointing for me. Then we have The Final Gambit which is the next book in the Inheritance Games series. Again I did really enjoy this book, I think it was a really nice resolution for the first trilogy. I absolutely adore all of these characters and I really liked the direction and the fact that this book still kept me guessing. However, the Hawthorne Brothers, which is the next in the series, but it's more of like a standalone, I did find that it was just getting a little bit more repetitive. I didn't really care as much. I do think I will still keep reading them because I, I love the characters, as I said, and I like the mystery element of them, but I just, I didn't enjoy this one as much. I'm still going to put it in I'm a Mess but I'm the mess you wanted because I still think they're good books but I just didn't enjoy this one as much. Then we have House of Sky and Breath which is a reread. I actually enjoyed it a lot more on the second time round. I still don't think it was brilliant so I'm going to pop it up here because I do still think it was maybe longer. I do still think it was longer than it probably should have been and there was a lot of filler but actually on reread like I say I enjoyed it a whole lot more. Then we have Once Upon a Broken Heart and please don't hate me but I'm going to pop it here it really didn't live up to the hype for me. I did still enjoy it and I do plan on continuing the series but it didn't really live up to Caraval for me and yeah it just fell a little bit flat so yeah I'm hoping it picks up in book two. Then we have House of Flame and Shadow and it should be no surprise to anyone that I've popped it right at the top. Absolutely love this book. Mo one of literally my most anticipated book of the year. Absolutely flew through it. Absolutely adored it. I know that this book 
book has been a little bit like Marmite. I know some people have absolutely loved it and are with me and I know some people have really not enjoyed it which is really really surprising. Like I say I'm definitely in the camp of the people that just loved it, honestly have no notes. I just consumed it um, and uh, yeah absolutely adored it. Then we have A Fragile Enchantment which, which to be fair it was quite difficult picking my next book after House of Flame and Shadow because I thought I might be in a bit of a book hangover but I am actually really glad that I picked A Fragile Enchantment because it was quite different. I'm not normally a historical fiction girly but I did really enjoy this one. I think because of the whimsical magical element but yeah I would really recommend this one actually. I'm kind of I'm kind of um, unsure whether to put it in here or here. I did enjoy it but I don't think it was particular but I don't think there was much to it. Oh I'm really I'm really really torn. I think I think I'm gonna put it here but it's kind of like at the bottom of that category if that makes sense. Then we have At First Spite by Olivia Dade so this was part of me reading my book box subscription box books. This was um, January's Afterlights. I enjoyed this book but I didn't think it was anything particularly special so I'm gonna pop it here. If I remember as well the smart was a little bit strange I think if I remember rightly. If you've read it as well you might know what I mean or maybe you're intrigued now and you want to read it but uh, yeah this one is also worth noting that a fragile enchantment I think was fairy loot's YA January book so I think that's why I read that as well. Then we have The City of Stardust which again I know has had really mixed views, some people really didn't like it, some people thought it was okay. I am, um, it's actually probably going to be one of my only books I put right down here. I really didn't get on with this book, I probably should have DNF'd it because I just didn't feel like there was much of a story and also I found the ending really unsatisfying and I just really didn't understand what was going on half the time so yeah I've definitely put putting that one down there. Then we have on the other end of the scale we have The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. I absolutely adored this book. The vibes are immaculate. It's a brilliant witchy dark tale following three women who are all linked to being witches in some way or the other and it kind of follows this kind of like murder mystery crime in a world where only women are witches and the twists and the turns I really didn't see it coming and I just thought it was really beautifully written so yeah. Yeah, definitely definitely would recommend that one. Then we have The Voyage of the Damned which is the Illumicrate book for January I believe. So it's also worth noting that The Invocations was the Evernight horror book for January and then we have Voyage of the Damned which is the Illumicrate book for January which actually I really enjoyed and I think it will definitely go up here maybe even to that spot. This is a murder mystery with sort of fantastical elements and I really loved the world bit Building. I thought the murder mystery was really interesting and kept me guessing. Really liked the characterization, and yeah, for a debut novel, I thought it was absolutely brilliantly executed and would actually really highly recommend. Then we have Daughter of Smoke and Bone which I read for Ashley at a Frolic Through Fictions Patreon book club. I know this one has been really popular on booktube especially sort of back in the day. I can't believe it's taken me this long to read it. I really really enjoyed this one. In fact I'm going to sort of pop it here. Again found the writing style and the characters really interesting. There was also some plot twists that I really didn't see coming and yeah really enjoyed this one and can't wait to continue. Actually if I was to reorder this one I'd probably put this one here and I'd also pop that one there and then maybe that one there and I think that's more of a fair representation as to where I'd place them all. Then we have Faye Bound by Sarah L. Arifi. I again I really wanted to enjoy this one. I did just find it okay. I'm gonna pop it at the top of the okay because maybe it would kind of flip between these two categories. I really wanted to enjoy this one more than I did. I did find it interesting and I found the whole um, world quite interesting. It gave me massive Avatar vibes. Hopefully if you've read it you kind of can see what, where I'm coming from. Yeah I found the world really interesting but I just I don't know I just it just didn't blow me away. I'm intrigued to read the rest of the series though and see um, if it interests me a little bit more. Then we have X's and O's which I'm gonna probably pop down. Oh I don't know if to put it in here or here. I don't know whether down here is a little bit too harsh. I found this book okay. I didn't find 
find that it was anything special. I didn't find it was anything particularly groundbreaking or different. The only thing that I did find particularly different is um, our main female character is a book influencer. So I think she's a bookstagrammer, which is kind of cool. But other than that, it was just kind of standard. Then we have the seven year slip, which I absolutely adored. This is probably one of my favourite books of the year. And it has definitely put Ashley Poston on my auto buy author list. This book is romance meets magical realism. Absolutely adored the characters, absolutely adored the fact that there's a sort of like an undercurrent of grief throughout, which was also really interesting and also really heartbreaking. You know, the whole, you know, are these characters are going to be able to have a happy ending? You know, it kept me guessing throughout and it was just so whimsical and magical and I absolutely adored it. And in fact, I'm probably going to pop it here because I, I I really really love that book. Then we have Twisted Love which was an interesting one. I can remember this one, I can remember this one being a little bit of a wild ride, um, not particularly the best written characters and a little bit stereotypical um, especially with one of the characters being Russian. I thought that that was kind of like a little bit sort of like stereotypical Russian gangster kind of element and some of like the smart I found a little bit cringy. I don't know I think I might put it down here just because I really don't think it was for me but I think I am still really intrigued to carry on the series and see if like it's just that trope or that characters that I didn't enjoy and whether I will enjoy Anna Huang's others, other books but we will see. Then we have Book Love which I don't really know where to put because it's a graphic novel. This is a really cute graphic novel which I'm sure so many of you will enjoy because it's all about you know being a book lover. I'm sure there'll be lots of things in there that you'll be able to relate to. I'm gonna pop it up here. I would say it was really enjoyable but I I don't know if I'd rate it any higher. Then we have Check and Mate by Ali Hazelwood which again I did quite enjoy. I thought the characters were quite interesting and I liked the whole chess element. I thought that was quite interesting but I do think it's probably one of my least favourite um, Ali Hazelwood books so maybe I'd pop it, oh I don't know, maybe in there. Then we have A Fate Inked and Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. It's worth noting that this is the February Fairy Loot adult book. I absolutely love the Bridge Kingdom series. I've read the first two and rated them both really highly so I was a little bit anxious slash excited to read A Faint Scene of Blood because I was worried about whether it would match up especially as it's more Norse mythology based but I can absolutely say I absolutely love this one, love Danielle L. Jensen's writing style and in fact I think I would probably pop it up here because I think it was really really great. Then we have The Crimson Moth which is the fairy loot YA book I believe for February. I actually really love this book. This one follows a witch and a witch hunter so you've kind of got that enemies to lovers kind of vibe. There were actually lots of twists and turns that I really didn't see coming and yeah I feel like it kept me on my toes throughout and I found it really interesting. Again it had kind of that Regency era kind of setting. At least I think it's that which typically wouldn't be my normal setting but then it had a lot of fantastical elements and I really enjoyed the romance. The two main characters kind of being pitted against each other. I really enjoyed that and the banter that that kind of brought. So actually I think I'm going to pop it probably here actually. Then we have Fangirl Down which sadly I really didn't enjoy. In fact I'm going to prop it here. In fact that might be the weird smart that I might be thinking of. I can't remember whether it's that or at first bite or even X's and O's but one of them has got a little bit of a strange smart scene from what I can remember. Yeah I just I don't know I don't know if it was like the fangirl element or what it was but I just really didn't like this book and I really didn't like the dynamic between the characters which is a shame because out of all the other Tessa Bailey books I've read I really enjoyed them it's just this one for example that really disappointed me. Then we have To the Cage of God by Elizabeth May which was the February Illumicrate book. I liked this one but I did just kind of find it okay. I don't know whether I want to read the sequel whether I'm really that fussed. I don't really remember much of it to be honest other than I think it's characters who have gods caged within them but yeah I'm really not fussed about reading more of that. Bride I did really enjoy actually. I think I'm going to pop that maybe here. I was really unsure about Ali Hazelwood kind of 
delving into the paranormal fiction but actually I think it was done really well. Again there's sort of a smart element that's a little bit more unusual or maybe not unusual if you re read werewolf romance but it was unusual to me but yeah I really liked the characters, I really liked the enemies to lovers dynamic, I really enjoyed that one and I also liked that there was more to it than just what it said on the tin. There was more sort of around the world and the things like that so uh, yeah I would recommend. Then we have Cat Gamer Volume 4 which is a really lovely cute manga series about cats and about gaming and I really enjoy it. Again I wouldn't really say there's much to it so I'm gonna pop it probably down here but it is a series I would recommend particularly if you have a cat and you like gaming. Then we have One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig which I thought was absolutely fantastic, really well written, love the world building, love the tarot style magic system, thought the romance was really good, thought just uh, it was just so well done and I would really really highly recommend. I think this one has been a particular favourite on booktube so I guess no surprise that I enjoyed it, definitely adding to the people that would have recommend that one. And then Two Twisted Crowns again I would say was really really good, maybe not as good as One Dark Window but I would also really highly recommend. Then we've got Belladonna which I'm gonna put down here, probably at the front of that if I can get there. There we go. I liked Belladonna and I liked the premise of it and I liked the twists and turns and the vibes but there's just something about it that just didn't meet the hype for me. Whereas Foxglove I really really enjoyed and I think I'd maybe probably put it the, like there. Foxglove I don't know, I don't know if it was because there was another element that was put into it that found that made it a bit more captivating for me but I definitely think it got better and then I'm hoping that Wisteria the next book elevates it that step more and then maybe it can become maybe that one will be a five star. Then we have The Dead Romantic. Now I feel like maybe I went into this book with too high expectations after reading The Seven Year Slip and absolutely loving it. It's sometimes a little bit of a shame when that happens. I do think I did still really enjoy this book and in fact I'd probably pop it like here but it just wasn't as good as The Seven Year Slip. I, like I say I did still really enjoy it. I liked the characters, I liked the premise but some of it just felt a little bit too convenient for me so I don't think I can say it's absolutely like no notes but I did really enjoy it. And then lastly we've got What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. Actually really loved this book. In fact I think I'm going to pop it here. Really love the setting. It sets in old time Egypt which again I didn't think would be my vibe because I don't really like historical fiction but to be honest this gave me the mummy vibes which I know this has been lacking to quite a lot but absolutely felt those vibes. Absolutely loved it. Really liked the dynamic with the love interest, really liked the family dynamic and all the twists and turns that we got and sort of like the mystery element and the magical element and also there was this big thing that happened at the end that I really wasn't expecting and I really wasn't expecting the author to go there but she did and I was very very shocked so uh, yeah we definitely recommend that one and I'm really excited to continue the series. So there you have it, those are all the books that I've read so far this year. Have you read any of these books? What did you think? Otherwise what has been your favourite book that you've read so far this year? I'd love to know, let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, bye guys!